Hi, um, my name is Mark Collins. I'm a director of remote autonomous systems here at SMD. Um, we've had a lot of questions about SMD's new EV robotics range, and um, we're going to be answering a lot of these questions in a series of videos that we're going to be releasing on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn uh, over the coming weeks. So let's start with performance. Um, there's been a number of electric vehicles in the market. Generally, these vehicles have been a lot smaller, but there have been some work-class vehicles that have um, been out there on the market the last couple of years. These vehicles, I would say, have been medium performance uh, vehicles. What we have here is a very high performance work-class vehicle. Um, when I say high performance, you're the thrust figures on this vehicle are around about 1,300 kilograms. That's way in excess of even the most powerful hydraulic vehicles currently on the market at this moment in time. The next thing that's slightly different about this vehicle is the DC voltage transmission system. Um, it's 10% more efficient than an AC system, which is traditionally used um, with vehicles of this type. It acts like a bus bar, which means that you can actually hang different items off of the umbilical system, such as TMSs. The umbilical that you're using in a DC system requires less conductors, and it's 10% more efficient when you're transmitting the power from the surface down to the bottom. Um, having a DC system as well means that it's ready to accept battery technology as well. Straight plug and play onto the vehicle, as we see. Other things that are different, it's uh, a fully modular design. So everything on the vehicle can be taken on and off in a matter of minutes. That includes the thrusters, the HPU that you see here, the power distribution system that's on the vehicle, the pod, all removable very, very quickly in a matter of minutes. The way in which we control the thrust system is quite unique also. We have combined the drive into the thruster motor. That means close proximity, means it's very fast control loop. That control loop then sits onto an ethernet backbone. That ethernet backbone then allows for sensor fusion technologies and over horizon technologies to be plugged in very quickly. The vehicle has a very advanced flight stability system. This uses adaptive PID modelling to actually anticipate what the vehicle is going to uh, see when it moves within the current. Uh, this will give a very, very stable platform and ultimately that is what we're trying to achieve with this vehicle. Stable platform for high quality data, high quality tooling operations. Yes, the vehicle is clearly not all electric. Um, in fact, this vehicle has the ability to uh, deliver up to 200 horsepower of hydraulic tooling power. Um, that's actually in excess of most hydraulic vehicles. But that hydraulic power is in the form of modules. And those modules have been designed to be slotted into this vehicle to allow our clients to use their existing tools and use um, existing manipulators for their operations. Um, currently, the, the market um, for electric tools is quite small. Um, there are many companies that are looking at them and, and developing them. Um, and the same goes for electric manipulators. Up to now, electric manipulators have tended to be of the smaller variants. Um, there's nothing really on the market just yet certainly there's proven that can compete with, with hydraulic manipulators that a work-class ROV needs. So we needed to ensure that we um, had the capability to run all work-class tooling, all the way up to the most powerful tooling. Um, and then, in the future, when electric tooling uh, comes along, we can actually uncouple some of the module. One of the modules you can see here, the little HPU in the background, it's a 50 kilowatt HPU, very small can actually be unplugged from the vehicle 
um, and replace with, with electric tools. Every component on this vehicle has gone through some very stringent and rigorous testing. Um, way more than we've, we've, we've done previously on vehicles. Um, uh, testing included um, things such as environmental testing, and temperature testing, all the electronics that are in the vehicle have been a uh, subject to very low temperatures, very high temperatures. Um, we've also subjected um, a lot of the components to vibration testing. Um, this is another reliability issue when these vehicles are used off the back of vessels, off the back of rigs, or if they're transported around the world. Um, so very, very important. Um, the other thing that we've done is we've done functional stress testing. So every single component on here is being taken to its absolute limits. Um, we've had a thruster in the test tank actually running for weeks now. Um, trying to break it, trying to find out what its weak points are so that we can ensure that we capture these and engineer these out so that we have an extremely reliable product that people can depend on. So this system is designed for residency and over-horizon operations. So reliability is absolutely key. So what makes this system so reliable? Well, let's start with the thrusters on the unit. They have a lot less moving parts than traditional hydraulic thrusters. There are no meshing gearboxes within the thrust units themselves. That means there are less components to wear. The thruster propellers are magnetically coupled, which means that if you get rope or fishing line stuck into the thruster, the thruster will naturally clutch, will not damage the thruster, the thruster can then be isolated, taken out of action and the vehicle control system will then compensate for this thruster, allow operations to continue as normal. The power system has full redundancy. So behind me here you can see the DC to DC power units. We have multiple units on this vehicle. Each of these units is 50 kilowatts, adding up to a total power of 200 kilowatts. They have isolation on both the input and the output side, so that if one unit has a problem, we can take it out of the loop and continue to operate with the other three units. If two units have a problem, we can continue to operate on two units, and so on. The vehicle uses a number of modules. Every component on the vehicle is a module, and that module is self-contained. It means that we minimize the number of connectors and harnesses between items on the vehicle. Connectors and harnesses have traditionally been points of failure. So, less harnesses, less connectors, more reliability. So, what's next? Well, this vehicle, as you can see, is nearing uh, completion, after which it's going to uh, start its wet testing. Uh, the wet testing will be initially in our own test tank, uh, in dry docks, and, and then moving on to uh, uh, some deep water testing in some uh, lakes and then on to testing in the, uh, the open sea. Following behind this vehicle is the Atom EV. Atom EV is a much more compact uh, electric work class but with a very, very high power output um, and the capacity to work in, in, in high current areas uh, such as within the renewables sector. That vehicle will be getting released in a matter of months um, as it uses an awful lot of the same components, components which have been tested on this vehicle here. The third vehicle that we have planned is the Survey EV vehicle. Um, 
it will be a different form factor, it will have a much more hydrodynamic shape. Um, this will allow it to be optimised for data gathering activities, for a very fast survey, um, or working in extremely high currents, up to, up to six knots. Um, and that vehicle is planned for 2021. Hope you found that video interesting. Um, if you have any questions, please get in touch. Details will be at the end of this video. Thanks very much.